Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, I'm going to point at the camera and say something significant like, <gasps> my new Synology is here, my DS1621+. Plus. Give me a minute to get things started, and we'll talk all about it. Well, as a lot of you predicted, I came running back to Synology. Truth be told, that was the plan all along. Uh, I wanted to fall in love with the QNAP NAS, but as y'all know, it just wasn't meant to be. So why not go with the devil you know? Uh, so I went back and got a Synology DS1621 Plus NAS. And today I'm going to introduce you to it and show you what I've done with it as far as upgrades and whatnot and tell you what my plans are moving forward for it. And uh, yeah, so it ought to be fun and exciting. So uh, let's get it started right now. So this was the day of the live stream and uh, the box came in while I was live streaming. And with Synology, it's a box within a box and that's fine, but it kind of uh, I find it strange that they don't put some other label on the outside of the box, you know. Uh, now, I know Amazon just delivered theirs me making love to the box, yeah. It was kind of silly, but uh, that's the kind of guy I am. So the first thing I did was dig the keys out, set them aside. And you can see, you know, as per Synology, they always package everything very well, as they did in this case. And I wanted to be careful to keep this in pristine condition. You know, I have 30 days to return it. Uh, it's not going to be returned, but I have the 30 days. Now here, there's a method to my madness. I was uh, trying to get a picture of the memory modules that, that are in this so that I can try and find memory later. That's kind of a low priority, but I wanted to make sure that I had the uh, choice to try to get the same manufacturer memory. And uh, while non-recommended memory will work you could have problems so anyway uh one thing i want to do is compare these drive sleds with the ones in the qnap uh they're they're much firmer so i'm putting drive sled five and six back in and now i'm getting uh the drive sleds loaded with my six terabyte seagate iron wolf drives and uh some of those were donated and some were paid for by funds from people that support this channel. So a uh, shout out to all of you that help uh, keep uh, Hunky Joe's Playhouse stocked with hard drives and other toys to play with so we can bring you these videos. Anyway, loading up the Synology with all the hard drives is the first order of business. And once we get all that done, then we can power the unit on. Now I like to go ahead and lock all the drives in just you know so I'm not tempted to press on the front button with the power running although it probably wouldn't hurt it I don't want to take a chance. Now this is my first startup so you'll see the LED light blinking Then I walk away to do other things. So a few days later it's time to take all the drives out and rip it apart again because we're going to do some uh, an upgrade to this unit. So I just want to give you an idea of how easy it is to get inside. Now that's that box is heavy enough with the hard drives, but with the hard drives in it's very heavy. So now I can do some of these nifty little camera shots and blend them in. So this is my overhead. Uh, I'm switching back and forth between that and the bench cam. And I was looking at the power supply and I noticed it's an 80 plus bronze certified power supply. Now this is an Intel X520 uh, uh, SFP Plus 10 gig network card. So that's what we're installing now. And I had to uh, I had to change the bracket on it because the bracket it came with is too large. It's for a full height slot. And uh, I'll tell you when I had this Synology open, you know it's it's well built, man. I'm very confident, comfortable with it. It's a great design. Here we are, we got the 10 gig NIC in, and I was just looking everything over to make sure I had it set up right. And we'll put the unit back together, and then we will uh, pop it back into the rack here shortly, and uh, put it back to work. But uh, yeah, 
Yeah, there you go. Popping the hard drives back in. And uh, locking them in place. Yeah, uh, for for the money I spent for this, it was money well spent. Um, there we go, putting her back into the rack. Now the other thing I'm doing here is labeling the box so I know where I put this network card uh, in the future in case I need it. Yeah, so there you go. Sorry, this shirt's a little uh, a little closed collar, too much starch. I gotta tell my laundryman uh, not so much starch in the shirt next time. Yeah, that would be me. I'm, I do my own laundry. I have since I was 12 or 13. But anyway, I digress. So the Synology is here. It's in its new home. I'm very happy with it. It's only got four gig of RAM. You can upgrade that, I think, to 32. And um, as you know, it has, or you may not know, it has a PCI Express uh, internal card or uh, slot in it. Um, so, um, of course, you know I'm gonna slam a 10 gig NIC in there. That was the whole idea of getting this this NAS, which was the reason also for getting the QNAP, it had 10 gig built in. So Synology can say, you can't use this RAM in here, it'll void your warranty. Wait, wait a minute, Synology. You can't do that. You can say you don't support the unit with non-supported RAM. But you know the way around that is to pull the RAM out when you call Synology and tell them what your problem is. But I understand where they're coming from because, say for example, they say this, this will take 8 gig of RAM and that's it and you put 16 in and you start having all kinds of trouble with it and you turn around and you sue Synology or blame Synology. So I understand where they're coming from. So you should probably follow the recommended uh, guidelines. But, but on things like a 10 gig networking card, really this is a Linux kernel that this is running off of. So chances are if the network card you want to use is supported under Linux, it'll be supported by the Synology. Now don't quote me on that. But I got lucky, I had one of those Intel X520 network cards that Sasha sent me uh, back in the day, and thank you, Sasha. And uh, it's a single port SFP Plus card, it's 10 gig, and he even sent me, he, he bought it for me in the US and sent it to me. And it even came with a low profile adapter, and as you saw in the video, that's what I needed to install it. So I installed that Intel uh, 10 gig network card and I connected it via an SFP cable, SFP plus cable, between it and my uh, Unify 10 gig network switch. Thank you again also, Sasha. And, uh, and it worked, it just worked great. Now the other thing I need to do on this NAS is upgrade it to, uh, uh, upgrade to probably 16 gigabyte of RAM. But RAM is expensive right now and Synology RAM is even more expensive. So we're gonna wait on that. The only thing that'll keep me from doing it is running some virtual machines on that DS1621 Plus. And frankly, I'm running them on the FS1018. Thank you again, Sasha, for that donation. And they're running just fine. I've got my phone system on there, my free PBX. I've got a, a Windows 2019 server running on there and a Windows 7 workstation that I need to keep around for compatibility issues. And it's working just fine. So. I did put the four six terabyte drives in there, the Seagate drive, so I have room for two more drives. Another good reason to use the Synology because of their Synology hybrid RAID. So later, say I want to add 10 terabyte drives to this, I can start replacing them and, and the, the uh, SHR array will grow with me. Now you have to be careful though because there is some, there are some problems. SHR, Synology hybrid RAID is simply RAID 5 using some tricks to get around limitations. But we are coming upon uh, to the point where hard drives have gotten so big now that if you put them in RAID 5 they do have a, 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 rate, a higher rate of failure during rebuild. So you got to keep that in mind. If you have a drive fail you think, oh great, I'm protected. All I got to do is put a new drive in and rebuild the array. Yeah, but the chances of a larger drive failing on an array rebuild are greater than they are on a smaller drive. So keep that in mind. Um, which is why it's very important you have backups. So the other thing that 10 gigabit network card will allow me to do is now back up to my Unraid server. We got a video coming up on Unraid as well uh, using 10 gigabit using uh, rsync. So now one little problem I have right now with Synology and I'm gonna I, I can't believe I ran into this. I've got a client 
Got a couple of clients with Synology and Azes now. Now when I've set up a Windows 2019 server, I set them up with mirrored drives for the operating system, just a habit I've always done it. And in order to do that under Windows, you have to create something called a dynamic volume. The problem is, is that when you go to try to back up that physical server using Synology's backup program, it will not back up dynamic drives. And I don't know, I don't know why they do that. I, I have a feeling I know why they do that, but I don't want to speak out of turn. So if anybody at Synology is listening and you claim to watch my videos, fix that. Uh, because I'm not going to stop setting up Windows 2019 servers with mirrored drives. And uh, the one way to do that fairly inexpensively is to use Windows Dynamic Volumes. So, um, yeah, there's that. Fortunately, I'd never ran across the problem here at Unky Joe's Playhouse because Gandalf only has a single drive set up in it, so I was able to back it up easily with a Synology. But I've got some clients now that I can't, I can, I, there's ways around it. I can use other software. But it sure would be nice to use Synology to take care of all that in one fell swoop. So, I've got room for two more physical three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. I am going to get some, uh, probably some 500 gig NVMe uh, M M2 drives uh, to put in there as caching to, uh, caching drives to see if the transfers or the or the you know the file storage is any faster. I doubt it because I very you know the only thing I use is I stream my my videos from this. Otherwise the the uh, the storage is dormant. In other words, I've copied it on there and I just access it from time to time. Uh, and f frankly, streaming video across your network takes megabits per second, not megabytes. So the only thing the 10 gig will do for me is, is when I'm doing these rather large file transfers here in the studio and with other, other equipment, it'll assist in that and make it a whole lot less uh, time consuming. So there you go, folks. Yeah, Synology's back and I'm very, very pleased. Yeah, it's a big kind of ugly looking box, but it's a steel chassis. I can't say that about the QNAP. Um, the fit and finish on it is excellent. Uh, you feel like you're holding something substantial in your hands when you go to move that thing, especially when it's full of drives, which I probably don't recommend, but you do what you have to do. Uh, it's easy to get in and service all the components. The RAM upgrades are going to be easy on it. Um, uh, let's just put it this way. I don't think you can go wrong buying a Synology NAS. Now, a lot of people say Synology is way too expensive for what you get. But don't forget you're paying for the software that comes with that Synology NAS. And um, you can run a small business on a Synology NAS with no other software than what they send you with. And it would work great. You can have a mail server, a web server. You've got Office, their version of Office applications in there. So there's no reason you can start a small home business with that. Now, I've never been able to play around with their larger units, and I don't really feel a need to. Uh, basically, I use these NASs for file storage and backup, archival, that kind of stuff, and it works really well. I have also used the Office applications on Synology, not as deeply as I could have. It was well worth the $7.99 I paid for it, um, and thanks to my Patreon and and YouTube uh, folks that have donated, they help pay for it as well. And uh, yeah, no regrets. I highly recommend Synology products. So we hope you found this video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked it. Leave your comments down in the comments section. Donate if you're so inclined, PayPal, Patreon, and the YouTube join function. Uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. We're trying to get to 10K by the end of June now. I'm moving the deadline to July 1st, so please, please, 10,000 subscribers. I know it's kind of stupid, but it just, I, it, I've been doing this channel forever. Uh, and I know y'all enjoy the content, so just, I want, a com I want a commitment from you, okay? It's time to put a ring on it, okay? All right. Don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.